you that are watching, God, let there be a sound of the lion that roars throughout the earth. And we are saying this day, they can give me a little bit more out of the monitor. Let the Lion of Judah roar, we pray this day. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered in the earth. God, we are asking you now to roar against any assignment that would seek to be formed against us. And we say, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And any word that would rise up to be spoken against us in judgment, we condemn it. For this is the heritage of the people of God. We are blessed. We are preserved. We are protected by the hand of the Lord Most High. Now I pray that you would roar and prevail. In Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. I want to do this. If there is anybody in this room and those of you that are watching, that at any time you were in a car accident or you were any kind of accident and you have a nagging injury or something that tries to hold on or remind you of that accident, I want you to raise your hand. All right? I want you to come up here. I want to lay hands on you. Let's believe God that this is the last that this thing is going to bug you. If you could just come around there. And we're going to lay hands on you. And those of you that are watching, if I could have my phone, please. This is the point of contact as the ushers are lining you up in a single file line, please. We are going to believe God. Those of you that are watching, as they're lining up here, we're going to lay our hands on them. And I speak to you that are watching. That if there is any pain in your body, Yeshua took your pain. Come on. If there are things that in your body that is out of alignment, because his body was bruised, not one bone of his body was broken so that you don't have to have any residual effects even in your body of anything. And that you are the healed of the Lord. That is the covenant promise. So I stretch my hands towards you that are watching. Towards those that are in this room. And I rebuke all pain. And I command it to come out of your body. Whatever the source of that pain. Whatever took place. If there's any trauma. If there's any mental reminders of accidents and injuries. I take authority over it in Yeshua's name. If there was any access that the enemy came in seeking to steal, kill, and destroy, we close all doors, we stop all gaps, and we cut off the head of the enemy. And we speak divine preservation. We speak life and wholeness over your body. We say no more pain, no more aches. In Yeshua's name, from this moment forward, the healing power of God goes forth. God, we believe for total and complete restoration and healing. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Pastor Shane, I want to pray for these people.
mighty to heal. Some of you need to just start moving your body. Some of you need to move your neck. Come on. Divine alignment into your bones. Divine alignment into your bones. Into your muscles. Every ligament of your body be healed in the authority of Yeshua's name. Let the lion roar. Yes, he is. Those of you that are watching, come on, do something you couldn't do before. Receive the healing power of God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, take a deep breath. And just breathe in the glory of God. His presence is here to heal, to deliver, to protect, to preserve. Thank you, Lord. I just I just saw some completely opposite of what we're praying about I'm not sure if you're in this room or you're watching but you just you put a contract in on a house you really liked the house and it fell through it wasn't received and you were very discouraged and this just happened like this month is that anybody in this room Matthew, you can monitor. Is there anybody there online? And God is saying, be patient because in the month of December, just before Christmas, God is going to unwrap what he had for you all along. And it's going to be cheaper, but bigger and better than what you felt like fell through it fell through because God's going to have something for you but that had to fall through so that God could come through and it's going to be unwrapped and I'm telling you it's going to be beautiful it is beautiful and it's a lot closer to where you want to be anyway that's the blessing of God I want you to say this with me all of you that are here today and those of you that are watching I want you to say I am blessed I am healed. I am whole. My mind is blessed. My soul is blessed. My emotions are blessed. My spirit is blessed. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I will live long. I will live strong in health, healing, wholeness, soundness of mind, a blessed memory, blessed recall. My life is blessed. My family is blessed, and it's off limits to the devil. I am preserved in our covenant, my covenant with Almighty God. Now give God a big shout of praise. Come on, give him a big shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. Isn't God a good God? Praise God. Well, Jonathan, I know you're watching, and I'm looking forward to having you come to the house. Can't wait for you to arrive Wednesday. It's going to be fun. And I know you've got a fight, but listen, I got some dessert. And you're going to have to snitch. You're going to have to eat. And then you're going to be part chef in the kitchens. We're going to take care of Mama. Yes, we are. So, All right, well, listen, why don't you do this? Why don't you greet one another and say this? Say, I don't know what I'm going to have you say. All right, let me think of something. I bet I know. Yeah, you act like a know-it-all. Well, I act like know-it-alls anyway. Say, I bet I know. Greet someone and say, I bet I know what time you eat Thanksgiving. Now, Brenda, I know you're watching. Usually at our house, it's about 10 p.m. It's a night meal of Thanksgiving. All right, find out if you can guess when somebody's going to have Thanksgiving. Lunch, dinner, breakfast. All right.
Well, good morning. If this is your first time in the building with us here at Lord of Hosts Church, I want to make you feel welcome. I also want to make sure you received a blue gift bag. If you did not get one as you came inside the door, please wave your hand at an usher. They have those available for you. Inside the blue gift bag, there's lots of goodies we've tucked in there for you, so you don't want to miss out on those, as well as a guest registry packet. I want to make sure you put that in your hand as well, so please take that out at this time. It has a picture of the stage on the front of it. Inside there, there's some information we want to send home with you, as well as a Stay Connected card on the left-hand side. Go ahead and tear it off, fill it out, drop it in the offering basket when it comes by in just a few moments, because we just want to send you a thank you for coming to see us this, this morning, and make sure you stay connected with everything we have going on here at the church. If you're watching by live stream, Facebook Live, Roku, YouTube, One Voice TV, we want to welcome you to the service as well. If you don't know what One Voice TV is, that is our new, what, what is called an OTT platform we've created for all of you out there. You can watch us live, you can watch all the archive services, as well as many, many great programs that we're putting out. Get Real with Hank, Game Changers, Daily Decree, and many more. Flashpoint is also out there for you to watch as well, so p please be sure to connect with us there. That is the one streaming platform that we cannot be canceled on. We've made sure of that. We can be canceled on all the other ones, but not on One Voice TV. So you want to make sure to connect with us there. Well, as you know, um, or so, or well, as you should know, today we have a special event occurring. How many of you know about it? Well, about half of you, maybe. Um, we have a shopping spree occurring today to help you with all of your Christmas shopping. So if you've got any family members, friends, maybe even, you know, a little gift for yourself, um, you, can, you can go check all of that out if you're watching online. We also have it online as well at hankandbrenda.org. Um, let me read my little flyer here. We've got lots of, uh, we've got, a, for, if you're here, uh, we have a food truck out there that you can get uh, walking tacos um, and some food and drink that you can you can check out in the in the connect center and then um, we've got lots of different packages for you that you can purchase for kids for each other um, there's some books included in some of that so please be sure to check all of that out also online you can get lots of really good deals. We're, we're offering some really good deals today, so please be sure, sure to check that out. Bless your loved ones with some great merch as well as books from pastors because we want to make sure we're sowing the word into people as well. Amen. All right. Give everybody here an online hand. Ask Pastor Hank comes. All right. Hey, that shopping spree sounds great. You could even shop for your enemies. Y'all are like, don't should, shouldn't you probably shop for your enemies? I don't know why nobody believes that. <laughs> so, anyway, how many of you found out when somebody's going to have their, anybody after 8 p.m.? 7 p.m.? Okay, early evening, all right. Morning, can anybody eat Thanksgiving in the morning? All day. <laughs> all day. No, actually, the next day is when you eat Thanksgiving. You put it in your Wheaties and all the, just try to get rid of the leftovers. All right, well, it's my honor, those of you that are watching as well, uh, to introduce two great friends, Paul and Brenda Crouch, as they come. I want you guys to come on up here, and uh, they're going to talk about the anointing of preservation, protection. They were in Israel, and you know, we talked about coming at the same time. I don't know if you remember I that. that. I did. And uh, I was listening to the Lord. I said, I just don't feel that I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> So, so we took one for the team is what right, you're here saying. Here you go, Brenda. Yeah. You take over and, and you could set that in order. Here it is. Yeah. All right. I can't wait to hear your story. So Thank let's you. give it up for them as they tell us what happened. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Well, thank you all. In fact, I just wanted to really start out by thanking each and every one of you because one of the things that did work in Israel when we were there was the internet. We never lost internet. We never lost our cell connection. So we saw the service that you guys prayed for us, believe it or not, even though we were... Thank ten, you for that, by the way. Yeah, 10,000 miles away. And it was very encouraging because, you know, we went through a really a, a tough period of the unknown. There's a fear of the unknown that many of us know about. And we went over to Israel 
really during a happy season. Yeah. It was the Feast of Tabernacles, which many of you may know what that is. It's called Sukkot. Exactly. And Jerusalem was packed. In fact, the tour groups were there when we got to our hotel. Uh, the hotel was packed. The streets were packed. People were going to restaurants. It's, a, it's like they're, they do Thanksgiving, but they do it for a week there yeah. is really what it is. <laughs> And it was, it was really awesome, and it was happy and joyous and this and that. And on Saturday morning, we had gone to install some equipment at a new studio there in Jerusalem, which we're going to have access to now 24-7. In fact, if I can ever get Hank to go back there, we could actually go live from Jerusalem <laughs> back to the church here. But uh, we'll talk about that later. But on Saturday morning, Brenda and I were getting ready to head out to... Uh, filming out in the Judean Hills. Uh, she'll explain kind of what we we're going to do. But we've got a little piece of video that on Saturday morning, we woke up to this. Take a look. usually fly if it's an airplane contrail they're fairly straight when they're jagged like that you know that's a rocket and that is a rocket coming in towards Jerusalem and so within a few minutes uh, we literally heard these explosions and concussions that were life-altering you know we've all been around handguns we've all been around shotguns but the concussion of an explosion of those rockets is a whole nother concussion. And our, the windows in our room were literally vibrating like a bass drum. And I, it, it was really unprecedented, other than the fact we had been there four or five years ago and rockets had come out of Gaza. They knocked them out with the Iron Dome. Everybody's probably heard about the Iron Dome. And within a few hours, everything was back to normal. But our friend that we were going to go to Bethlehem with and go to the Judean desert called us immediately and said, Paul, in fact, he's Arab. He's an Arab Christian, and he calls me Habibi, which means brother in Arabic. And he said, this is very different. This is very... And I heard something in his voice that I thought, okay, we're not in Kansas anymore. This is going to be... And literally, within a few hours, we realized... A war had started and had broken out. We knew nothing about the incursion till seven year, uh, several hours later, and that 1,500 Jewish innocent people were literally slaughtered as they came over the border there in Gaza. And what's crazy, and the Israelis are still fighting this in their own mind, the Gaza border, Gaza, I mean, Israel as, as a whole is only 10 million people. And it's the size of New Jersey, so it's a very small area. And Gaza is a little strip about the size of Manhattan. But the border around Gaza makes the, the California-Mexico border look like a chain-link fence. It is 40-foot concrete walls, razor wire, a one-mile no-man's land, monitored by drones, satellite, and infrared cameras. And they still, through the tunnel systems and through the paragliders breach those walls and Hamas now I'm not going to blame the Arab people Hamas is a whole nother ball game those it's guys an ideology. it's an ideology and those guys are lower than animals to demonic. do and and we really believe and I think you would too Hank that it's a de demonic spirit the same demonic spirit that took airplanes into the twin towers 23 years ago was passed down a generation, and that's what took place um, as they breached those walls. And for us, it was a, a very trying time. It was a very scary time, I'm going to be honest. Now, we had faith, and we believe that rain falls on the just and the unjust at the same time. 
but God had us there for a purpose. Amen, amen. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, really spoke to my heart as we went through this process was if we were to write our own story, we would just really make everything pretty safe. We would take no risks and... Uh, sometimes, in my experience, it has been in those risky moments and in those low points in life that God is actually honing my faith and my theology. I'm, I'm learning uh, about his love in those moments. I'm learning about what it means to trust him. And, you know, when we were faced with these very intimidating situations because we were in this you know, when you're in the, the soil where war is taking place, you're feeling it also in the spirit. You're feeling it in the physical realm. And it's a whole different, a whole different animal. It was very humbling. Uh, we are very knitted with the, the people there in Israel, both the Israelis, the Jewish uh, community, as well as the Arabs. The, there are Arab Christians that we love dearly and consider our brothers and sisters. And so this is a very... The complexities surrounding this are very deep. It's very difficult to understand. But one of the things that was so encouraging to me as I thought about how that, you know, we like to uh, make our kind of forge our own path and, and we don't want to think that bad things can ever happen when they do. We need to understand Psalm 37 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And I know that it, amen, let's just give him praise. I know, we knew that in those moments, what we had to do was just say, Father, we trust you. You know, we had waited eight years to go into the Judean hills and film this particular um, event that we were going to uh, do. And, and it was like, I felt all along God had ordered the steps for this. It was as if the red carpet had rolled out and then there was a suddenly that we did not understand. But in those moments, we simply said, Lord, we trust you. And the peace of God was upon us in the thickest of it all. And we're just so thankful that God is with us and he upholds us with his hand. Amen. You know, I'm not going to get into the theology of the conflict because it's, it's very spiritual. It goes back literally 3,000 years. We want to go back to Father Abraham. You've got, uh, you know, uh, Ishmael and Isaac. And who was there first? I mean, Ishmael was the firstborn. And you cannot tell an Arab that Ishmael was not the firstborn of Abraham. Mm. Now, not of Sarah, but we all know the story. But, I mean, it's so complex on so, both sides. And Pastor Hank is your, your spiritual guide to the theology of Israel and the history and who's right and who's wrong. But I, I do know we saw both sides, like Brenda said, of the conflict. And there are Arab Christians there that love the Lord. They've been there 600 years holding up the banner of the cross, building the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. And we need Bethlehem. to pray for them, too. And we need to pray for them because they're as caught in the middle as any one of us. And many of those Arabs truly feel occupied. I'm going to give you a little example. I, I learned from the crew here, the Omaha Indians were here hundreds of years ago in Omaha. That's why it's named Omaha. They were here first. There's no doubt that the white Europeans did not come till the 1600s and 1700s. They were here first. Imagine the Omaha Indians militarizing, organizing, and giving us all six months to get out. Leave the church, leave your house. We've got somewhere near Sioux City. We'll give you some land up there. You have six months to get out. Leave everything. That's what took place with many of these Palestinians. They were re taken to other areas, this. They truly feel, I mean, the Jews hadn't been in, in Israel for over two, almost 2,000 years. They scattered in 70 AD, mm -hmm. and it was the Arabs that, that had occupied that part of the land. Now, there's other, now listen, Israel has a right to be there. Jerusalem is the capital, and I, you know, there, I see both sides of this. But I think we 
have to understand both sides of this conflict too because there are innocent, innocent people yeah. caught in this. Who the Lord loves. Who the Lord loves. Mm-hmm. The Jews, he loves the Arabs. Amen. And we saw firsthand, we saw a report while we were there, a little eight or nine-year-old Jewish girl mm. died of a heart attack from fear, mm-hmm. not knowing if their parents were going to be you know, killed or taken away or taken hostage. She literally, the fear gripped her so hard, she died of a heart attack. On the flip side, there was a, a, a piece of video Brenda sent me. A little Arab boy, about the same age, eight or nine, big brown eyes, just uh, it looked like a little model. And he was literally trembling as he was being brought to a hospital there in Gaza because his house exploded his parents were killed, and he did not know what to do. And they're literally walking him into the Gaza hospital. And thank God there was, I don't know who this doctor was, but he was hugging this little boy, trying to comfort him. But I know that little boy didn't know what's going on. He's eight years old, nine years old. His body was old, trembling. And he was literally trembling like a little frozen puppy. And he, so, And I know for a fact that that, Ideology, listen, we can kill people by the bushel. You cannot kill an ideology. And that Hamas mentality and that spirit that, that gets implanted, I think, in some of these people is passed down generation to generation. And that's what we have to pray for. That's we, what we want each and every one of us to pray for. Yes, pay, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We all know that. We've heard that scripture a thousand times. But it's the individuals that we saw firsthand that were caught as we were fighting. What happened after um, the bombs went off and immediately we were supposed to leave the next day on Sunday. And all of a sudden, all the flights were canceled. Cancel, 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 cancel. Now, the airport never closed. Israel, it would take World War III to close that airport. They keep it open just regardless. But our, our flights every day, we'd book a flight, it would cancel. We'd book a flight, it would cancel. We'd book a flight, it would cancel. And that's why we were delayed for so long and didn't know. In fact, there was a great story of a, a congressman in Florida, Corey Mills, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. Yeah. that really put his brother, I'm telling you, he put his money where his mouth is and got our, some, we had tickets with him. We had two seats. We, we were going to go with a flight he had coordinated but we would have gone on a bus a four-hour bus ride to Amman Jordan mm-hmm. through another checkpoint and that was pretty scary in and of itself so we finally got flights out on El Al now we all know El Al it's and we gave those those flights yeah. to some other uh, Americans and they needed. got out through through this gift from Corey Mills which is amazing so pray for him he's a very strong believer but we got out. El Al is God's airlines. El is the root of Elohim, Israel. So God's airlines finally got us out. Now we had to. <laughs> um, but what was funny, El Al also stands for every landing always late. So, and thank God they were late, but we were glad to be out. And we had to actually escape through Dubai which is three hours the wrong way, if you know geography. And then we had to go to Dubai to Doha, and then Doha to Rome, Rome to London, London to L.A., and we finally got home. And listen, when we landed, I, I, I truly kissed the tarmac when we landed. Now, I know it was California, and I know it was L.A., and y'all, whatever, but I, it's still... America has some issues, and California has some issues, so, but it's still a pretty, pretty nice place, and we were glad to be back, trust me. But um, very quickly, I think the coup d'etat on all of this was we, we were on our flight, the El Al flight, getting ready to take off, getting through Ben Gurion Airport, for those of you who have done it, is a three-and-a-half-hour process. It's a nightmare even in peacetime. You know, passport control and baggage and this and x-rays and all that. We finally got on our flight. We're sitting there on the tarmac getting ready to close the door. And we're finally kind of breathing a little bit 
better. And all of a sudden, and it is God as my witness, every flight attendant started screaming, running down the aisles, get off of this plane now. Mm. Get off now. Do not grab your bags. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Get off. And literally 250 people started to uh, go up the, the jetway back to the terminal. And that was the lowest point, I think, for us, realizing we're going to miss our flights uh, in Dubai. We were going to miss all our connectors. And Brenda realized what on your app? that I was getting constant feeds about updates with the war. And so there was a barrage of rockets that was coming at that very moment surrounding Ben Gurion Airport. And we knew we were right in the epicenter of that. So, you know, it was just... I have to say, though, that the peace of God continued right. to remain with us. And I, I really felt in my spirit that the Lord had arranged and provided for every step of the way and that he was going to get us out, and he did. So we were, we were ushered back in. Everything was cleared. We were ushered back in. It was a little chaotic. <laughs> uh, you know, there's moments where you just go, and God helps you to relate to some of what even the Jews went through, I, I hate to say that as a comparison, because it's not, but there were moments in this whole journey that God put on our hearts, what the Jews went through in the Holocaust. Mm. And I really feel like that what God is saying right now is that we, as his body, have an opportunity in front of us to love people, to love them to Jesus. And our prayer is that Christ be glorified, that his spirit be poured out upon all flesh, and that those who are in an evil agenda, that they would be awakened to the person of Christ. You know, there are people having dreams about Jesus in, in the uh, Arab community. And it is our prayer that Jesus be glorified and that he be revealed Amen. in these hours. I agree. And there will not be peace. I, I mean... I think things will settle down. I really don't believe. I, we had one friend say, you realize this is the beginning of World War III and all this stuff. I don't believe that. I do believe this is the beginning of groanings. I truly believe that. But uh, I do think we'll be back. I'm hoping we'll get Hank and Brenda back at someday. I don't know. We passed our 10 minutes up. Yeah, I know. And, and, and we're done. But again, I just wanted to... Th yeah, this is the 10-minute version, by the way. Uh, I want to thank... Like I said, each and every one of you that prayed for us as we were there, it was really, truly felt and truly needed. Amen. And we want to thank you for just Amen. holding up a, a part of the body of Christ. Thank we you. Thank you, guys. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you. How many of you are thankful for the Crouches? They've been such a blessing to this ministry and uh, everything that happens here. So we're excited about that. Well, let's just uh, do this this morning. It's offering time, and uh, I want to share one scripture with you quickly just to build your faith. And this is Elementary Giving 101. Most of you have heard it, but I want to say it again because how many of you know it's good to hear and hear and hear and repeat it? You know, some Christians only give when they have their needs met, and then they give out of that extra. The scriptures teach that our tithing should be our first fruits. First fruits means the first thing that comes in. We pay our tithe, we give our tithe, we have the opportunity to honor God with our tithe before we pay any other bills or obligations that we may have incurred. You know, I heard John Edmondsini say years ago, before you ever turn the light switch on, start burning electricity and have to build that bill and pay that electric bill, you should be making sure your tithe is paid. Just a good thing to think about. Proverbs 3, 9, I want to read that out of the Amplified Classic. It says, Honor the Lord with your capital and your sufficiency from your righteous labor. God thinks your labor is righteous. And with the first fruits of your income. So the first thing we do is take that tithe and honor God with it. You know what? I'm going to give you a newsflash from heaven. You don't have to wait on a word from the Lord to tithe. Some of us get 
so super spiritual as Pentecostals and Charismatics especially that we think we have to pray about whether or not we should tithe. You don't have to. You can just automatically do it, right? Amen. Amen. That, that's my word for you today, is just obey God. And then when it comes to offerings, the Lord says you can give as you purpose in your heart. You can pray and ask God what to do, who to give to. That's more discretionary as you're led by the Lord and as you purpose. But you know, God, you can never outgive Him. And you don't have to wait for a word to give. How many of you like it when your children come up to you and they say, I love you, Mommy, or I love you, Daddy? And you don't have to go to your children and say, Would you please tell me you love me? We don't want to have to. Now, yeah, we do have to train our young children sometimes to be thankful, to, to express. But when they get older, you just appreciate it when they just out of their heart say, Mom and Dad, I just love you. I appreciate you. And I think that's how God feels. Well, he doesn't have to give us a word to give. We just give because we love him. Amen? And that's our heart today as we give. And thank you, audience around the world, for being so faithful to Lord of Hosts. I'm going to show you in a minute some things that are happening here on the campus that are exciting. And um, I know that the good news is if we obey God, he's faithful and just to continually supply our needs and give us in abundance. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, let me do this. Ushers, you can serve the people now if you want to offering envelope just raise your hand and while you're preparing your offering we'll talk a little bit about the new building raise your hand if you need that and we'll put the giving information on the screen in a minute but I want to give you some good information about what's happening on the building and if you drove up today and looked at the outside you probably saw some improvements and some changes how many of you noticed that we have the Lord of Hosts signs up on the buildings on both the north and the west side let's put that up so that our online audience can see that if we can put up a picture of where we're currently at. There you go. Okay. And you can see the sign there on this west side is up there beyond, right above the uh, stone. And it probably isn't a close enough picture here, but they've actually put the metal behind the cross now. So that's finishing up. Let's go to the uh, rendering of the building of how we projected it would look. And I want you just to flash to, to it, if you would, for a minute. And we're really almost there. It's getting very close. We got some cedar to put on that, that one section, but it's getting very close. And uh, God's been good with the weather, and we've been able to accomplish so much. Um, the stone is on those columns that are under the canopy. Uh, the signs are on both the west and the north. And they'll be lit up in a couple weeks. It takes a little while yet to get the electrical done to those. Um, but it's exciting to get this much done. And so much is being done in the interior. And maybe next week we'll show you some uh, fly-throughs of what's happening on the interior also. But uh, online audience, we appreciate your help too in completing the tabernacle. And uh, the giving information, let's put that back up on the screen one more time. You can text to give. You can... Go to the website, hit the donut, donate button there, and then you can choose where you want to give, whether you want to tie the offerings. If you're giving towards a the tabernacle, there's a section that's called Build the Tabernacle. You can specify that on your drop down. It's also on your envelope as you give today. Let's do this. Let's stand. Hold up your offerings high. And we're just going to confess God's word over you. Father, I thank you that as we give today, your hand of blessing is upon us to prosper us, to increase us in all that we do. I thank you, Lord, that your word tells us you rebuke the devourer when we give. We have supernatural protection because we give to you. And Father, it's our honor to give to you. We don't have to be prompted by you to give the tithe. We do it out of obedience. But we thank you when you prompt us to give and we will be quick to obey. And we thank you that you're so good to us. You just lavish us with your gifts. And as we step out in faith and do more for you, you bring it back to us so that we can continue that great cycle of giving. And it's an honor to do that, to see people one to the Lord, to see people receive the word and the prophetic word around the world. 
and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Pastor Matt, come, let's do the declaration. Amen. Well, let's get ready to decree this together. Amen. We declare the new auditorium and LOH campus shall be built and completed. We say to all the walls, be built up. We decree it shall happen without delay. We say that we have all the finances needed for the Lord is building this house. We have more than enough, excess and overflow. Lord, you are providing seed to the sower. We call upon you, Lord of hosts, to bring forth heavenly assistance and raise up multitudes of people that shall give abundantly to this work. We prophesy that we shall double, double, and then we will double again. We declare new things now. We decree new tabernacle and campus be built now. Give them a praise this morning and put your agreement on that as we welcome Pastor Hank. All right. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Matt. God bless you for your giving, those of you that are watching and as well as those of you that are in the room. And I want to just remind you that uh, this is Thanksgiving week. Make sure that we give thanks to the Lord. And uh, also, we won't have an in-person service on Wednesday. We're going to have our heart to your home instead. So uh, you can enjoy time with your family. Praise God. Well, as you're giving, I just want to uh, go ahead and just let you know. Uh, and then I think Flashpoint is Tuesday, something like that. So that's your calendar. But um, how many of you know I believe in this Bible? And those of you that are watching, this book is a book that you can trust uh, at all times, no matter what you're going through. And it's because of this book, I was able to write two more books that I believe in. And I want to just encourage you. Um, this is the supernatural power of Jesus' blood, where I talk about your, your right that you have and we have to plead the blood. And uh, it works. So I want to encourage you with that. And then the other one I'm going to talk about today is the anointing of preservation. And I really, really believe in this. How many of you have read this? It's a, it's a great book. It really is a, a great book. So I want to encourage you to do so. All right, well, the ushers are serving you, and um, I'm ready to serve you now. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get our Bibles out. Those of you that have your phone devices, uh, make sure they're turned off. Uh, <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> make sure you're turned it, No, No, it's not turned off. Just make sure it's silenced. There you go, because you want to look at your Bible. We get it. All right, I want you to open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 2, and I want to talk about the anointing of preservation. And uh, after what uh, we faced this last week and uh, different things that we were walking through and walked through, it just all the more confirms to me uh, what I'm going to share with you today. And uh, sometimes when things take place in our lives, uh, it's easy to look at what took place rather than remind ourselves of the promise and, and the ultimate victory that we have. And that's so, so important. And so I want you to look at this verse, and I want you to see what God has promised us in our covenant. Now remember, God keeps His word, and it's important that you keep your word and your part and you keep the covenant. God, it says, he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Verse 8, he keeps the paths of judgment. And he preserves the way of his saints. How many understand that that is part of God's nature as your heavenly father? As your God, he has and will preserve the way of the saints. I want you to look at yourself, or if you can, you can't look at yourself, but you can at least say, that's me. My ways are preserved. Amen. Now look at the next one. Here's why. Psalm 37. I want you to look at verse 28. For the Lord loves judgment, and he does not forsake his saints. Remember, Jesus said that. I'll never leave you. I will never, ever forsake you. And I can tell you, I've been serving God since 1984, and I have never been forsaken by God. He has been so good. He is good. And I'm expecting his goodness this day and every day of my life. And notice the saints. Again, we just read that he preserves them. He says they're preserved how long? 
They're preserved forever. So preservation is protection. Preservation is to be kept from harm and danger and tragedies and calamities and accidents and injuries, right? But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. People keep saying, well, how is this movie going to end that we're seeing in our country? Well, the seed of the wicked are going to be cut off. And God's going to preserve his people. He's going to preserve this nation. It's already in the process. And so that's what you have to stand for. You can't just look at things and base your judgment off of everything. Now, those of you that might be just online with us right now, on Wednesday, and I mentioned at the beginning of the service, Pastor Brenda and Pastor Christie were in a high-impact collision that was caused by someone else, and thank God all of them are alive. And I remember when Brenda, uh, in fact, she drove, she was in, in, in my vehicle, which was a bigger vehicle. That in itself is preservation. Because, you know, that's a, it, it, it was a you know, great vehicle. It was, I'll just say that. <laughs> And that's okay. It's a material thing. I told God a thousand times. I said, who cares? You know, uh, it didn't matter. But when she was backing down the driveway, it was kind of funny. She made kind of a little funny face at me. I was going to make a funny face and I was going to stop her for like 10 seconds, which probably would have made the difference. But one thing that I told myself I would not do is I would not say it could have been worse. I refuse to say that because that then is saying in my heart and to the God of my covenant that he wouldn't have kept his end of the deal. I'm not going to go there. And so when she was pulling towards the, uh, backing out of the driveway, I looked at her and I had a really weird feeling. I mean, strange feeling overcame me. And something wasn't right. I could feel it. And I remember looking up at God. I just looked up and I said, Lord, I've prayed the blood. That's what I said to him. And I went about what I was doing. And what's amazing to me is when we face a trial, people may say, well, you prayed the blood. You prayed. Well, you got to understand a principle. Look at Isaiah 43, verse 2. You have to understand, Jesus said something that we don't always like to hear. He said, hey, in this world, you're going to have some things that are going to trouble you. You're going to face some things that sometimes you're not going to like. You may not understand. Some things will be answered on the other side. But however, we have a covenant, so we don't have to live in question. We don't have to live in questioning God or in fear or unbelief or, you know, that we think that something automatically is going to happen to us because it happened to somebody else. No, that's not what you put your eyes on. You put your eyes on the covenant. I don't even put my eyes on the accident. I put my eyes on my covenant. I put my eyes on the fact that my covenant with God, our covenant, Father, worked. My wife is alive. Pastor Christie is alive. And the other person is alive. Amen. And it's going to have, and it's going to continue to have what God promised us. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. But I want you to see what Jesus, what, what he said or what the scripture says. When you pass, notice the word when. I wish it would have said, you'll never pass. But when you pass through some waters, how many of you ever been through some waters? How many of you ever been where your bills are uh, high as uh, you're, you're, you're knee deep in, 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 in having to face some things? Come on, Brent and I, our ministry did not start off easy. There was times we wanted to quit. There was times we didn't know where our next meal was going to come from. We, we drove junk cars. You know, I was just honored to have a new car. And I'm still honored. That God gave me that vehicle, even though it's, it's gone. It's total. doesn't matter. It's a, it's a vehicle. And God's just going to continue to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we could ask or think. Because that's his promise. But you're going to go through sometimes things that, you know, wow. <laughs> you know, God, I feel like I'm up to my neck, you know, facing something. Come on. We've all been there before. And I'm not speaking unbelief. I'm a faith man. But I'm also realizing that in my life of 57 years and in serving God since 1984, that's almost 40 years, I've been through some stuff. And I can say I've been through it because that's what the promise is. When you pass through the water, didn't say the waters are going to drown you. Didn't say you're going to go blub, blub, blub down under. It said you're going to go through it. 
I will be with you. Underline that. That's preservation. And if you go through the rivers, they'll not overflow you. When you walk through fires and trials, you are not going to be burned. Neither shall the flame kill. That is preservation, covenant promise all over anything that we face in our life. That's what God said. Amen? And that's what I believe. And that's what I stand by. Now, I want you to see this. Look at Mark chapter 4. So what do you do when storms of life come? And on the same day when the evening was come, come on, notice it was darkness. How many have ever faced anything dark? He said unto them, the disciples, hey, let us pass over to the other side. So once Jesus speaks something, how many believe that you can believe him? Because God is not a God that he should lie. And so when God says things in his word, that he has redeemed our life from destruction, which we're going to look at. How many know we are to take him at his word and not get into fear or anything else? And so he said, we're going to go to the other side. Now that should have settled it for the disciples. They had already seen Jesus do other miracles. They should have known, hey, if the boss says something, that settles it. We're going to the other side. Now look at what happens. It's called life. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships. Man, that's pretty bad, the other little ships. And there arose a great storm. Notice it wasn't just a small storm. It was a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship. And now it was full. Can you imagine them bailing water? And there arose a great storm. Keep going. And he was in the hinder part of the uh, ship. He was asleep on a pillow. And they asked him. And said to him, Master, don't you care that we are going to perish? Here's the problem. They only looked at negative. They only looked at their circumstance based on what was happened or what happened. Water in the boat. Looks like trouble. But yet they forgot. The reason he was resting is because of preservation. Let's go to the other side. And our words are going to carry us there. God's word is going to carry us there. We're going to be preserved no matter what may rise up on our journey to the other side. Now, notice if you're going to live in preservation, you've got to understand a principle. If you are going to take your covenant right of preservation, health, healing, wholeness. Come on. How many of you believe in your covenant of healing? Has the, ever, has the devil ever tried to make you sick? So what you have to understand is your covenant will be challenged. God's word will be challenged. Jesus said, we're going to go to the other side. The devil didn't care. That's why he's called a thief. Does a thief knock on your door? Excuse me, but do you have a big screen television? I would like to borrow it. No, the thief would try to come into your house. That's where you get your three German shepherds. You pull out your Second Amendment rights and you let them know they got the wrong house. Wouldn't be a good idea. But they awoke him and they said, don't you care that we perish? They didn't understand they had a promise of preservation. Look at verse 39. The devil will always try to challenge what Jesus said. And he arose and he rebuked the wind. This is what you have to understand. Sometimes when you're going through things in life, there's opposing forces. And he said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Now, why did he rebuke the wind? It had a personality. It was a devil. And if you keep reading Mark 4 into Mark 5... Why did the man that controlled the whole region that had a legion of demons was the first one to meet Jesus in the place that he said he was going to go? This was spiritual warfare. They were trying to take out Jesus. They were trying to kill, steal, and destroy. But yet Jesus took authority over it that it is not to happen. Do you know how many days you have to get up? You have to get up and you have to take authority. You live in a world. Where the enemy hates your guts. And you have to stand up and say, I live in preservation. I plead. That's why you plead the blood of Yeshua over you. Now, let's keep going so we know what the story is. And Jesus rebuked him. But I want you to look at this. Look at John 10.10. Jesus lays it out. He lays out the source of what challenges your life. He lays out the source of what 
often tries illegally to come. That's why he's called a thief. Okay? The enemy illegally tried Wednesday. The thief comes not, but to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Does it come by permission? It comes because you're in this world. It tries to come because it wants to challenge your covenant rights of what you know are yours and whether you believe it or not. So the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus said something. He said, wait a minute. I want to let you know, pause for a minute. I have come that you may have life. So he's saying, even though the enemy will try illegally to do things against your life, against your covenant, what did Abraham have to do, if you know your Bible in Genesis 15 and those of you that are watching, when he cut covenant with God and he made two halves from those carcasses and he had to walk through the blood, what immediately showed up to challenge his covenant? Remember the fowls. And what did Abraham do? Did he tolerate the fowls? No, it's immediately amazing to me. Soon as he cut covenant, stood on the covenant, declared the covenant promises, the devil showed up. And those fowls, we know of Mark chapter 4, Jesus, when he's telling the parable, he says, by the way, the fowls of the air, that's the devil. And he always comes to steal and to challenge the word. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, I've come to give you life. Now, what kind of life is that? If you just look at that, you think, oh, that's just to have a nice Christian life, eternal life, uh, a mansion in heaven. But Jesus said, not just to have a good life, but to have it what? More abundantly. No matter what you face, you're always going to win. And here's what kind of life he was talking about. Go to Romans 10, verse 13. How many of you are saved? How many of you ask Jesus in your heart? Then you have a right to what I'm going to show you. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's when your spiritual life begins. You call on Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. You now have, as a new creature in Christ Jesus, a new life. And that life and that salvation, that word saved, is a package that's given to you. And it's called your sozo rights package. It's the Zoe life. It's the life that Jesus was talking about. I've come to give you when I am crucified on that cross and I'm raised from the dead and I'm ascended on high. I have come, if you call in my name, to give you the greatest benefit package that is in existence. And you know what it is? It isn't just that you get a mansion. It isn't that you just get forgiveness of sins. You get, according to that word, save, your sozo rights package that you signed on for. I don't care what we face. I, it doesn't matter. He provided it. And here's what it is. Health, healing, wholeness, soundness of mind, a blessed memory, blessed recall, protection, preservation, rescued from harm and from danger. That is the life that he said when the devil comes and tries illegally, you have the outcome that is in your covenant. Now I want you to look here. Look at Luke chapter 4. Yeah, but what about Jesus? Oh, let's look at Jesus. Do you know that in the book of John alone, they tried to kill Jesus at least 10 times before he was crucified. They were constantly trying illegally to take him out before he was to lay his life down. If it was just automatic preservation, right, sweet by and by, nothing would have even manifested, right? But it's called he lived in this world. And the devil was constantly trying to illegally access him. That's why you have to, and I'll show you, you have to watch your mouth. You have to watch how you live. And you have to walk in a spiritual awareness that the enemy is a thief. And you give him no access. 
And every day you pray the blood. Every day you ex exercise your covenant rights over your life, over your family. I told you, I don't get out of my house without applying the blood. I don't get in my car without applying the blood. Well, but, 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 but did they apply the blood? The blood was applied. The enemy illegally accessed. However, what was stronger was the blood because it preserved. And they're alive. And they're walking and talking. Are you listening? Spirit of the Lord, Jesus said, is upon me because he's anointed me. So now he's declaring his anointing. He's declaring that the anointing of God is where? It's upon him. What kind of anointing? Well, it gives you a job description, but it's something more than that. There was a, an anointing, a presence that came on him. You as a Christian, it means a little anointed one. You as a Christian means that you carry the presence of God. You carry the anointing, the power of God on you. And watch this. When Jesus announced that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, it was an anointing as a job description that you see, but it also was a presence that came over him that preserved him, as I said, ten different times. We read about. That's just what we read about. The devil tried to kill him. But look at Luke chapter 4. Now, I want you to look at this. Look at what happens in verse 28. In verse 28, Jesus preaches a little message, says, By the way, guys, I am this Messiah that I'm reading out of the book today. And all in the synagogue, didn't say a few, everyone in the synagogue, when they heard what Jesus preached, were filled with absolute indignation and wrath. And notice what happens. Keep reading. They rose up and thrust him out of the city. Now, wait a minute. And led him to the brow of a hill where the city was built that they might cast him down headlong. They were trying to kill Yeshua. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Was this illegal access? Yes. yes because it said they led him to the brow. I don't think they went, Shh, Messiah, come over here. Okay. They had a hold of him. They rose up the level of anger. You don't use words like thrust him out of the city if it was whistling at him. Come over here, Jesus. Follow us. We want to show you uh, a sightseeing thing. No, they rose up. They were angry. They thrust him out of the city. They were ticked off. They were illegally trying to access his life. Now, why did? Why? 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 Why were they allowed to even touch him? You can look at it and say, this is what people do. Sickness comes. Accidents happen. You look at the thrusting him out, the leading to the hill, and, and you bypass the outcome. They went to cast him headlong. I don't know why they were able to touch him. We don't often know why the enemy comes in. We don't know how he comes in. How in God's name were they allowed to touch the Son of God and try to kill him? Why were they even allowed to put hands on him? Look at verse 30. But he passed through. He supernaturally. Bing! And I could see him. Bubba Tharlamu. I ran up in my ass. I was about to cast him over. I don't know where he went. <laughs> and they're pushing each other. You idiot. You had him. We had him. We were just about to throw him over. Where did he go? I don't know where he went. I don't have no idea. And I can see Jesus over in Capernaum going. <laughs> right? What was the outcome? You're not talking to me. Preservation. 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 And that preservation carried him his whole life just because things try to touch you or does touch you does not negate that preservation isn't available thereafter and you're gonna keep seeing it get your eyes off of what the enemy wants and that is that you put your eyes on him all right let's keep going Let's look at uh, Acts chapter 27. Look at the Apostle Paul. So the Apostle Paul now gets in a ship, and he has a ship accident. 
I want you to look at verse 41. Okay? He has a, Acts 27, verse 41. I'm waiting for them to put it up. I don't know if they didn't have it. That's okay. So Paul gets in there, and thank you, and falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the, the ship aground, so he, he wrecked his ship, or they wrecked the ship. And the four, po- four parts stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. Well, this was the Apostle Paul. How in the world? Why? God, why did that happen to his, his ship? Look at verse 42. And the soldier's counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out. So now he's about ready to die according to orders. But notice again, verse 43. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that, that which could, they which could swim, you better know if you can swim, right? Should cast themselves first into the sea and get to the land. This isn't that, this wouldn't be any, I saw a video the other day of uh, John Wayne, he's my favorite actor, and he was teaching this little boy who was fishing how to swim, did you ever see it? What are you doing? I'm fishing. Well, you ever swim? No. I'm going to teach you, and he picks him up and he throws him out on the lake, you know, and the boy's like, I can't, like, move your hands, you know, and he moves his hands. All right. But notice what happens. Cast them first, and the rest, some on boards, and some, that's where surfing came in, by the way. They're all on boards. And so that's the first biblical example of surfing. I can see it now. They're like this, you know, Paul, the apostle Paul's coming in, you know, <laughs> sort of like this. You know. <laughs> and broken pieces of the ship. And it came to pass, how many in that ship, even though it was in an accident? All safe to land. An angel showed up. Why? Because of right of preservation. See, the devil tried to take him out in a ship accident. But what prevailed? What's going to prevail in your life? Preservation. Preservation. All right, go to Acts 28, verse 1. Look at what happens. So now they get to the shore. And you would think that everything's going to be peachy keen. Because now we're on dry land. It's 2024. (laughs) And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called how do you pronounce that? Malta. That's where malts came. Ice cream. See, ice cream's in the Bible. The island of Malta. That's where they invented ice cream and shakes and malts. Okay, so you've got to stay biblical. You see where surfing was, all that. All right, now look at verse 2. And the barbecue. Barbarous. Now I say I got my mind. I say bar- the barbecue people. Oh, so now that's where you get barbecue, you know. I honestly thought that was barbecue. I'm telling you the truth. And the bar, bar, bar is it barbarous or barbarous? Reminds me of that one guy, the Rizuli. I am not a barbarous man. Remember that show with, uh, what's that guy's name? Sean Connery. The Rizuli. What was that name of that? That was a great show. The Wind and the Lion, great old show. I am not a barber. I am not a barbarous man. That's what he says. All right, barbarous. The barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received everyone because of the present rain, because of cold. Now watch what happens. Paul's just minding his business. And when Paul gathered a bunch of sticks, see, he didn't ever go to Texas. You, you never, come on, Texans, you never put your hand in the sticks. Right? You guys are from Texas. You, that's why they wear boots up to here. Right? Because of the snakes, you got to kind of kick it and everything. I did that when I was in Texas on a ranch, a friend of mine, Clinton. He, I reached into the pile of six. He, he grabbed me. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to build a fire. Never put your hands into the sticks. And all of a sudden, my mind, when I did, went back to this. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Paul hadn't been to Texas yet. But there came, a, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened his hand. Okay, this is the devil. Wait a minute. How come you could even touch Jesus? How come you can now fasten your hand onto the Apostle Paul? Look at what happens, you stupid snake. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast, it was venomous. It wasn't a garter snake. It wasn't, you know, part of the ship's, you know, hosing part, uh, you know. This was an actual snake, and it was hanging on his hand. That means his chomps were still in him, like on Shark Week when people are flapping and flipping. You remember those, 
venom was, I mean, he was hanging on. No doubt this man's a murderer. Now, here's what happens when somebody gets attacked. 